on today's show, contenders or pretenders of the Western Conference. Who was the bigger addition for the OKC Thunder, Isaiah Hartenstein or Alex Caruso? Will this Thunder team be too inexperienced to make a true deep postseason run and have legitimate title chances? It's all coming up on today's Locked on NBA. You are Locked on NBA, your daily NBA podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome to another edition of Locked On NBA, the biggest stories with the local experts. I'm your host, Jackson Gatlin, also host of Locked On Rockets right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Now, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Look, you've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sports book. But right now, we have something a little bit different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then, with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel anytime. FanDuel is the spot you want to check it out you want to get on the action too so not only can you capitalize on this NFL Sunday ticket offer but you can also take a look at all the different odds available to you over at FanDuel.com we're talking about who the favorites are in the Western Conference who the real contenders are in the Western Conference this upcoming season. You can take a look at the outright betting favorites to win the West this next season. OKC at plus 300. The Mavericks at plus 480 to make it out of the West again right there with them. The Denver Nuggets also at plus 480. And then the Minnesota Timberwolves at plus 500 to be your Western Conference champion. So for all those odds and so much more and to take advantage of this incredible offer, head on over to FanDuel.com slash locked on to download America's number one sports book. Joining us now is the host of Locked on Thunder, Ryland Styles. You can track down wherever you listen to your podcasts or on YouTube. Just search Locked on Thunder. Here are we as we are discussing contenders or pretenders of the Western Conference. And right there at the top of the West this past season, the OKC Thunder as the number one seed. So let's start right there, Ryland. Why should the Thunder be considered legitimate contenders going into this next season? After you know winning the Western Conference, at least record-wise, this past campaign yeah i mean you look at last year's team and they were able to win 57 games in the regular season and this year they've improved on all of their deficiencies while maintaining a core that will care about the regular season which is not promised everywhere in the modern nba like these are young guys who will play every single night who are still looking uh to use the regular season as a vessel to develop as a as a, as a mechanic to get better for the postseason as you try to integrate Alex Caruso and Isaiah Hartenstein and those two guys are a big reason why this team is a contender because last year they played the Mavericks in a six game series with a zero point differential and so when you have those bones and now you take out the illest fitting player in Josh Giddy and you add in Isaiah Hartenstein who immediately cuts off your biggest weakness which is front front court depth then this team has to be considered a contender. I, I, I like it. It's very strong points there. Getting to Isaiah Hartenstein and, and Alex Caruso in particular, which of those two guys, obviously it, it's expected, you know, Hartenstein slots into the starting lineup, all that, but which of them is the bigger get for this team? Is it as simple as just it's going to be Isaiah Hartenstein or is there an argument that Alex Caruso is also a monumental get for this Thunder team? Yeah, I, I think that, you know, nationally, it seems like Hartenstein for sure would be the obvious answer and would be in the starting lineup. I'm not so sure that Mark would agree with that. I'm not so sure that we'll see the Thunder start Isaiah Hartenstein, uh, but I still would pick Hartenstein as the bigger addition with no slight to Alex Caruso, because what Alex Caruso does is let you play the best version of yourself from a year ago. Like if you take out Josh Giddy and put in a 40% all defensive uh, player, 40% uh, from three and all defensive player, you get the ideal version of the Thunder. The thing is, though, they, they could have patchworked their way to what Caruso can bring you. Obviously, not an all-defensive guard outside of Lou Dort's uh, you know, potential candidacy, but you could have put Wiggins out there more. You could have put Isaiah Joe out there more, Casey Wallace out there more defensively. You could have found ways to, to mitigate that. What you could not have patchworked was an ability to defend the rim, was a backup center. You only had Jay Will, who is 6'9", and a really scrappy guy who can take charges and stuff, but he cannot even compete with what Hartenstein can do. Whereas, if you wanted to recreate what Caruso can do, you could mix and match and turn the Rubik's Cube to, to patchwork together a roster that can do that. So I think that 
uh, of the two, the fact that you cannot produce Hartenstein's, Hartenstein's size, you cannot produce his ability to play make at that position and to screen set and roll to the rim and finish at the rim and protect the rim. Given all that, I think that he has to be the biggest addition, even if we see Caruso start over him. Now, one thing uh, that I think you can maybe point to as I don't want to say a weakness for this Thunder team because it depends on how you want to define weakness, right? This is an incredibly young team. So both Hartenstein and Caruso do add kind of more of that veteran element, right? They, they've got, you know, a lot more collective experience than many of these other guys on the Thunder roster. What would you say to those who are concerned with maybe the inexperience factor of this Thunder team as they look to make a deep run in the postseason this next campaign? Yeah, I think that it's important to get Caruso, who won has that familiarity with Mark Dagnall. He was the coach of Caruso in the G League, then went on to play with LeBron and win a championship. And so uh, he's gotten to play with extremely talented guys. He's gotten to see what it takes to win a championship, albeit in the bubble. And you can take that and implement those lessons. And then Hartenstein, like he, he maybe has not done it on the biggest scale, uh, but he has been involved and played with great players and played with a variety of coaches. Whereas a lot of these Thunder guys, they've only been in this system. They've only been with this coach. They've only been with this organization. So he's kind of seen the pictures everywhere else to where you can say what's worked for them, what hasn't worked for them, and give you input there. And then the bottom line is, inexperience will be a, a question mark because what I think that the Thunder have is I think that the Thunder have a championship core. Like they have the Thunder have a championship roster right now. The thing is, Shea for sure is a 16-game player. You saw Chet, you saw Jada at times struggle a little bit in the playoffs last year until those two guys – prove that they're also 16 game players, which could happen this year. It could not happen till next year, or the year after, but I think it eventually will happen when those two guys show that they're there, those 16 game players, then this team will win a championship. But until that point, uh, of course, you're going to have to question uh, that nature. The, the organization is gambling on that happening. I think it's a great bet. I think that that will happen, but you just have to kind of sit back and wait and see how they adjust to their second go around in the postseason. Yeah, if we could get some lines over at FanDuel about will Chet and J-Dub ultimately become true 16-game players, you're you're sma you're taking the over on that, smashing the over immediately because that feels like a really, really strong bet at this point. Talking about inexperience as a potential weakness for this Thunder team, despite the, you know, the massive, the rousing success that they had last year, what would you point to as maybe the a unique strength of this Thunder squad, one that maybe none of the other Western Conference contenders can claim to have? Yeah, I think that one of their biggest strengths is their ability to match up with anybody and, and to have that matchup variance, which is what uh, Holmgren and Hartenstein now bring you that you didn't have a year ago. If you want to try to go ultra big, the Thunder now have two ways to try to beat you then versus just one. Last year, they would try to just go small and ruin you off the floor. That works against Valanciunas. It works against the Pelicans. It doesn't work whenever you have Luka getting to uh, navigate with bigs because Luka is just so amazing. Uh, in the pick and roll. And so he can force feed buckets to uh, lively. And then also Gafford's there as well. So now being able to uh, match that size with Minnesota, match that size with, size with Denver, match that size with Dallas, plus still play small. Like they're still going to have those small ball stretches that can throw a wrench into things. They can play in a variety of ways. And I think that not having uh, just one way to win is a massive deal, especially whenever you're trying to just win series after series. So obviously Boston is the team to beat this upcoming season, you know, defending champions, all that. But we're taking a look right now at the Western Conference. The Mavs made it out of the West this past season. So I'm going to have you power rank these four teams for me, Rylan. And this should be good here. This should, uh, you know, get the juices flowing with the fans. If you can power rank the Nuggets, the Mavs, the Wolves, and the Thunder, how would you go? What order? So I think it's going to be the Thunder, Mavericks, Wolves and Nuggets. Ooh, I like that. You want to back that up a little bit? What's the reasoning behind I, that? I just really believe in the Thunder's ability to uh, play a, a deep squad that can help you navigate 82 games. Then when you shrink the rotation, if if everyone's betting on a leap from Chet and Jadab in their second postseason, plus you have what Shea provided. And again, last year's Dallas series was a zero-point differential in six games. And then a foul late stopped it from going to game seven in the Paycom Center where anything can happen in game seven. So th things would be talked about a little bit differently if a uh, little breaks go your way here and there. And the Thunder have the personnel to make those breaks go their way now. So I think that they are, just as the odds say in Vegas, 
the number one team. And then with Dallas, I, I just cannot bet against Luka Doncic. I think that he's good enough to win you two games every every playoff series. Then you add in Kyrie, you add in what Clay Thompson can bring you, you add in what Lively can bring you, and we've seen them do it. Uh, so I think, and I think that Jason Kidd's a really good playoff coach. He might not be a good regular season coach, and might not be able to navigate uh, you know the 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 October through April stretch. But when postseason starts, he is really excellent. And so I'll give Jason Kidd credit there. The Timberwolves, I think, are a really good nucleus and roster. I I wonder which way it goes, though, of the pressure of this being their last hurrah before the tax dollars get too much and they might have to split up this team. That can either really galvanize you or it can really split you apart, and it, we'll see which way that ends up going. And I just think that Denver's lost a little bit too much to still be in that upper echelon. Obviously, Jokic is the best player in the world. That counts for something. But I, I just think that they've lost a bit too much for the depth of the West. Will the Thunder be able to repeat as the number one team in the Western Conference? Will they be able to get their revenge on the Dallas Mavericks? You're going to have us covered for all of that and so much more over at Locked on Thunder. Ryland, thanks for stopping my Locked on NBA with me. Thanks for having me.